Hello, welcome to Sidewalks Your Entertainment TV series. I'm Raphael Siegel, East Coast correspondent, coming to you from Londell's Restaurant in Harlem, and I'm joined right now by one of Harlem's finest rappers, Loon. Loon, welcome Rob to Sidewalks. Rafi, baby, what's <laughs> up? I'm doing it right now. We don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to jump right into it, Let's get a little it. personal. Your parents have been dubbed the Bonnie and Clyde of 116th Street. They basically ran that part of Harlem. Yeah. What exactly was the family business? Family business at that time, you know, the 70s, you know, the whole, actually America was just bombarded with drugs, you know what I'm saying, heroin, cocaine, and things of those natures. And it's like, my parents, they played a very strong and significant role in the drug trade at that time. But at the same token, they had a romance that kind of surpassed the whole drug situation and the hustle altogether. So it was like, you know, being, it, it was an honor, you know, it's a definitely an honor to be, you know what I'm saying, the result of their love and, you know, the credibility that they established for themselves in the streets enabled me to live like a prince. So, you know, that was definitely the benefit of their hard work and, you know, the work they put in the streets. Now you're considered a new artist despite the fact that you started in 96, yeah, right? No doubt. People still view you as a new artist. How'd you get your first big break? Well, my first big break came from, believe it or not, I actually stole some studio time from Puff before I even knew. Oh, is that another scandal? We're going to start something else here? What's nah, happening? it's just crazy because it's like he had a um, producer by the name of Young Lord at the time. And what Young Lord did was let me utilize one of his sessions. Mm -hmm. So I did a whole album in 24 hours. You know what I'm saying? We had two whole pizzas and an ounce of weed. And we did a whole album in 24 hours, 10 songs. And I took those 10 songs to Tommy Boy. He got signed two days after, you know, me dropping the demo off. So basically, that's as close to an overnight success as you're going to get. I mean, if Tommy Boy would have been on their job, <laughs> you know, the momentum that I created, if it capitalized off, it probably would have been big in 96. It probably would have been a lot of things that wouldn't have um, took place in hip hop. Now you're known and respected for your writing, but with such a hectic schedule, I know that this is the last of about 50 interviews you did today. With such a hectic schedule, how do you put a time aside, to put aside the time and energy to write the quality rhymes that you need to write? Well, me, I don't write my rhymes on paper. I haven't wrote a rhyme on paper in probably about six years. So it's like, I'm pretty much improvising and being very honest and genuine right now in this interview. And I take the same integrity to the studio or the silver screen, wherever it may be. Wherever you place me, it's like you're getting raw material from me. So the time is not really a factor. It's really so much of the payment situation. You know what I'm saying? We have to make sure that the check is cut, studio is booked, and you got low, and I'm coming in there right off the top of the head, and I'm giving you a hit. All right, now we're in Harlem, so I gotta find out what exactly is Harlem swagger. What Harlem is swagger is something that you really can't explain. You just gotta spend a little bit of time in Harlem. Like, you might have to come back and hang out yeah, with me for a while because it's like, see, us as Harlemites, right? <laughs> we're a little more driven by money. Fast cars, fast girls, and anything that insinuates the lifestyle of a hustler, a player, a Mac, whatever you may, you know what I'm saying? And the swagger that comes with that, you know what I'm saying, is definitely something that, you know, separates itself from every other characteristic that's shown from any other, like, inner city or ghetto that's, you know, like I said, bombarded or saturated with drugs and violence, you know what I'm saying? It's just that we have a more sophisticated, more luxurious approach to the game. And we love to glorify our hard work. Like, we like to go have fun. You know what I'm saying? Well, help me uh, real quick, because I'm going to have to leave here and walk to my car. And, and I don't feel like I'm in danger at all, but I want to fit in a little bit more. So, real quick, like, how would I look like I had Harlem Swagger? Would I, would you how do I get you? What do I do? Someone like me? Right, let's stand like it, let's stand it for a bit. Let's stand it for a bit. Let's see what you're working with. Let's right. see what you're working you got, with. You, you want to see me walk, right? Alright, you got your shell toes right. on. I got And that's a plus. You see right. that? That's a plus. The not dirty only, socks is not a plus. No. Dirty socks is cool because they, like, they actually look like they, they match the stripes 
on your Adidas. Oh. So you cool. The stripes are like gray. So thank you very so, much. Yeah, socks what about gray. the action slacks? They're working? The action slacks are cool. They could use a little pressing. Yeah, that. You know what I'm well, saying? You know, but it right. shouldn't hinder your walk through Harlem. All right. So yeah. are, are you going to watch me walk here? Shirt is cool. It's ca it actually coordinates with the cat. It's nice and, uh, and loose. Here we go. So you want to see me walk? Let me see your swagger, right. baby. Let's see it. <laughs> hey, I'm Rafi. tethered by the microphone. Okay, you know what, Rafi? What? <laughs> you know what? I don't even know what to know. We're going to remix that step. One more time. <laughs> right. One more time. One more time. Now, we got to have a certain level of confidence. All right. You got to have make, confidence. Yeah, you got to have confidence, all right. right? All I need is four steps from you. Just four? Yeah. One all hand right. in your pocket. You always keep your hand on your money. That's a Harlem trick. And, and I keep your hand on your money. That's right. All right. That step. You might be all right. Why are all the guys laughing in the background? What's so funny? You know why? All your boys are laughing in the background. I'm going to tell you why they're laughing. <laughs> because the simple fact that you just nailed the Harlem Swagger in like one try. Yes. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. A little bit. Thank you very much. You are, let me tell you something. Watching the other interviews, you are a very down-to-earth guy. You're having a good time, and I appreciate it. Thank this is the last much. interview. He gets to go off into some limo or something like that and enjoy the rest of his night. Loon's self-titled album is in stores right now. And real quick, you know, some albums are for the car, some albums are for the picnic, the bedroom. Where are we going to hear your album? This album will be heard in each one of those places you just named. <laughs> Claude Thomas' joint will be in your bedroom. Okay, so basically, every track in the album has a different location you can enjoy it definitely, at. Definitely, definitely. And then, the quality of the track is like a single. So it's like, I'm not giving you an album cut that caters to you and a single that caters to her. Mm -hmm. Everybody has their own single to grab out this album. So go get that self-titled loan in stores, Bad Boy Universal, go out there and holler. We back. Respect it. Expect it. We'll end on those wise words. Yeah. Awesome. Thank well, you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs>